Today we're going to make a robotish nightlight bookcase thing. I cut down a sheet of three quarter inch plywood using the track saw made by Mike from Modern Builds. I've been using this track saw a lot lately because it's the easiest way for me to cut big sheets of plywood without using a table saw. I was feeling pretty good about my ability to cut a straight line with a circular saw, but after I cut two pieces, I was feeling pretty bad about it again, so I switched over to the chop saw. Once I had cut out all the pieces for the bookcase, I switched over to the pieces for the robot's head. And in case you forgot what my left elbow looks like, well, there it is. I glued the bookcase pieces together and made sure there was a spacer at the bottom so that the bottom piece for the bookcase could still fit. I held the glued piece in place with squeezy clamps and used my battery powered nail gun to tack them all together. Once both sides were finished, I attached the bottom in the same way. I didn't want to apply too much downward pressure when attaching the shelf, so I used a combination of toe and knee clamps. And here's the same process on a smaller scale. The top piece was a little bit tight, so I used a technique called hammer fist to put it in its place. For the top glue up and assembly, it's same thing, once more, with feeling. I used a random orbit sander to get rid of the roughness on the exposed plywood edge. Another option is to do edge banding, but I prefer the plywood edge, so if you say that in my comments, I will ignore you. I used a block sander to break down all the sharp edges. I had a few people tell me to build a workbench so that I wouldn't have to sit on the floor. Now I don't get why they would rather see me sitting on my workbench, but hey, I'm not here to judge. I marked the place where I wanted the robot's arms to be and used a hole saw bit to cut the circles. On the side where I wanted to run the lights, I drilled a hole from the back of the bookcase to match up with the center hole on the side. I cut a bunch of small pieces from one of the leftover strips of plywood and hand sanded all the edges. These were to be the feet of the robot, so I angled them out a bit and glued and nailed them into place. I used a couple of the leftover pieces for the neck of the robot. And I used my giant squeezy clamps to hold it in place while the glue dried. I used steel wool to take all the factory markings off of a piece of copper pipe. I cut a small piece as a connector for the torch 
and then two 11 inch pieces for the arms. If you've ever wondered how easy it is to pull fairy lights through a drill hole with tweezers, let me tell you, if you do it off camera, you can do it in the first go. If you do it on camera, it'll take about 45 minutes. Having quality shop time is important, but it's also important to take a moment to share a meal with someone you love. I love you, Gary. I attached the control box and sensor to the back of the robot with teeny tiny nails and stapled the wires into place. I used Gorilla Glue to attach the elbows, which in this case are actually shoulders. Once the glue had dried, I attached the right arm and an end cap. For the torch, I used a 45 degree angle with the small piece of copper that I cut and a reducer at the top. The last step was to shape the lights into a torch flame, and it kind of worked. So that's how I build robots, with zero robotics and only a 3% chance that it will try and take over the world. Click the thumbs up if you like this project, leave me a comment if you felt ambiguous about it, and give me a thumbs down if you're a turd bucket. Follow me on Instagram if you feel bored on a daily basis. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can see what I do next. Or don't. Whatever. I'm not a cop.